Boom. All right, we got Tanya Lee here, Soul Speaks 5D. This is episode 52. That's a seven. I know that's a good number. Uh, and uh, it's been a long time. I, I think I don't, I should have went to look, but uh, I've seen you. Not only have I seen you out there, uh, probably since I want to say like 2015, 14, it's been a long time. Yes. I've seen you out there. And I, and the other thing about you is you've been doing videos a long time. Like that's one of the reasons I remember you because uh, there wasn't a lot of people doing lives back in the day. Do you remember yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. There wasn't too many of us. There really wasn't. There was people putting up videos, you know, more, they were more so doing that, but then that, then it started to, the, the live started to kick on. Um, God, I wish I, wish I had this. I'm going to double check one more thing before we get started. Just to see if it's me, my computer. I just want to make sure we. Yeah, a lot of readers who are very apprehensive about doing lives. And I had uh, to really work with some to get them to go. I'm like, no, go do it. Go do it. <laughs> well, I thought, uh oh, hang on now. I'm having a problem. Zoom. Oh, wow, this is crazy. This is nuts. Okay, anytime we have technical difficulties, it's always a great show. Uh, yeah, what you said about that. Mm. Um, I, you know, it's funny because people come on over the years and um, they, um, they'll they come on once and then the, like, they'll come on for the first time ever. And then, and then like within two weeks, they'll, they'll hit me up, like, let's do it again, let's do it again. Do, do you run into that? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've seen you sitting in this room doing videos many times, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, and other places, yeah. I'm sure. So yeah, welcome to Soul Speaks 5D. And uh, thank you for coming in and sharing space with us. Um, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Welcome to my office. <laughs> <laughs> well, Slide I know, <laughs> I mean, I know... Uh, I mean, back in the day, you know, it would be like medium, psychic, mystic, uh, reader. Uh, that was kind of a, like in, in before, I say before 2012, that was kind of a, a thing where, you know, like even here in this old neighborhood where my family's been for many, many years, uh, right, right outside of downtown Houston, there's a, there's a, um, a card reader in a little house down the street that's on the main drag that's been there for years. I think I went when I was like 20, but before 2012 on or about 2012 in, you know, in the non-virtual reality, I guess you could say um, the person that was the medium or the psychic or the reader, either nobody knew they were <laughs> because they didn't tell anybody or they were the weird one, right? They were the uh, different, but also kind of respected, you know, because uh, enough people, you know, uh, could attest to them. I have a feeling that you've been doing what you're doing a long, long time, but, and I also have a feeling you've got some uh, indigenous blood, but I don't know why. I don't usually say stuff like that. Um, but yeah, where are you from? How did it start? Um, did you have the typical, you woke up when you woke up, when you were born? I mean, you were awake when you were born and it got suppressed and some traumas happened and it came back and then 2012 hit and here we go. What was your story like? Uh, it's a little bit different. You're right. I am a uh, Native American. I'm full blood. I'm half Cherokee and half Osage. I was mm. raised in Oklahoma, ran really? away to Texas. Um, Back in 1990, um, I was born in Arkansas as my parents were driving to Oklahoma. Um, and now, like with many people, you know, um, it's like, is sorry, it's not, I think this will work. Is you're that good. okay? My lighting's still okay. Oh, it's yeah, good. you're good. You're good. Spirit, my mess with it. Anyway, um, I had a 
kind of different childhood. Um, I um, was, I went through a lot of physical and mental abuse as a child, as early back as I can remember. Um, and to the point where um, I was used in armed robberies. Um, my stepfather um, did a lot of crazy, crazy things. Um, and um, it, it got so bad that by 10 years old, I wanted to, I just ran away from home and lived on the streets for a few, few uh, well, a little over a year. And then I went into um, the shelter. And because of my age in that time frame, there really wasn't anything for kids like me. You can look up kids like me. Uh, we were called the throwaway kids. And um, I did, um, I had to go to where the, they put the juvenile delinquents because they didn't have places. And uh, most people didn't want to foster kid my age. Um, and it took me about a little over a year to get placed into a foster home. Uh, now you're you're what, at, the, at this age, you're what, like 12 now? Oh, no, I'm, st I'm 11. 11. 11. Yeah. No, just turned 12. Yeah, just turned 12. And um, that was not a very good experience. Um, there was, a, being from Oklahoma and Native American, uh, seg segregation was still going on strong. This, um, this this would have been what six sixties seventies early seventies yeah early seventies um, but Tulsa was split up by um, uh, African Americans on one side of town and whites on the other now where and, where were you living at this time Tulsa Oklahoma oh Tulsa oh okay <laughs> yeah that's a pretty uh, a lot of people don't realize how. I'm just going to say it. Well, we can say that. We're not uh, censored. But really how racist Tulsa is. Oh, yeah. Their history. I mean, they had that uh, that where they burned the whole black business district in the in the early 1900s. Yeah. They had a bunch of other bad stuff happen. Of course, we know with the indigenous. Um, yeah. So I just want to make sure I, I caught everything. So you're yeah. you're full blooded. Uh, half of Osage half uh, another so that's obviously your mom and your dad you're driving through Arkansas on the way to Oklahoma where, you, where they live or they're, you're gonna live I guess and uh you're born in Arkansas so I guess they you hatched <laughs> and they took you to Oklahoma probably to the yeah. Indian Indian lands I would imagine reservation uh, and then uh very very quickly it's not cool you got a stepfather who's not cool if you're yeah. in the indian reservation unfortunately you know that was all planned but uh it's probably alcohol involved which makes it even worse but uh so you end up saying to hell with this 10 years old i'm getting out of here you bounce around and you end up in tulsa uh 11 12 years old and you're and you're taken in by a foster home foster care and I, I was placed uh over on the black side of town uh, which didn't go over too well um and uh, was very violent you know throwing rocks at you trying to jump you all kinds of crazy stuff um and so I left that and uh, went back to my mom's for just a few months and I had a different stepdad by that time and uh, that got crazy there and I just said, you know what, I, I talked to my caseworker and I said, I can't stay here. I just can't. She took me to the turn. Well, she took me and got me a couple of clothes, a couple of outfits, a bag, and took me to the turnpike and gave me 20 bucks. I hitchhiked to Oklahoma City. Wow. And, um, and you're 12 years old, 13 years old. Yeah. And then, uh, well, 13 by now. And then... Um, I got me a car and a car. Um, yes. I had my first car when I was 13. How did you get a car? Uh, you just bought it. <laughs> you know, back then you could get fake IDs and stuff and everything was a little bit younger. You know, it was 15 to work. It was 18 to, you know, drink and do all that. 
Yeah, I remember. I remember. I didn't realize. Uh, God, you were you were very uh, ingenious, <laughs> I guess, or you know, you had to survive or whatever. So, uh, yeah. So you no. you now are you like? Did you have a fake ID or were you posing that you were sixteen? Or yes, I did get one when I went to Oklahoma City, so that way I could work, and I got me two jobs, got me a little car and a little house. Um, on the poorest side of town, of course, but it was clean and nice and um, had a little boyfriend and um, that, that didn't last. Um, I wasn't ready for that kind of thing. Um, wasn't, um, I had a stillborn at 14 and that just kind of changed me for a while. And um, I went through my little phase of drinking and drugging and doing all the crazy wild stuff and went back to Tulsa. And by the time I was 17, I got pregnant again. And uh, I had my daughter and I said, well, I'm not going to do the same thing as my mother because my mother was, was a drug addict. She was a drug addict up to like the last three months of her life. Um, and um, so I've been clean ever since. Now I did keep on drinking and it wasn't until I have a 37 year old, a 30 year old and a 16 year old. And when I got 30s. pregnant, with, okay. uh, when I got pregnant with my son, of course, you know, I, I wasn't drinking and I just never cared to do it again. Really. Right, right. I just never really got back into it. I, you know, I used to run bars and uh, pool halls and things of that nature. So um, it was always free and, you know, it was always fun to do, but, you know, it just, just came a time just to walk away from that type of life. Um, what were you going to ask? No, I was, no, no. Uh, uh, how old yeah. were you when you walked away from all that? From the drugs and everything? Yeah. When you just said. Enough. 18. At 18? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, that's powerful. So you hit it, you hit it pretty hard once you went to Oklahoma City, you got yourself on your feet. Uh, two jobs, gets a car, has a boyfriend, and, and you're partying. You're partying. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, I didn't do drugs in Oklahoma City. I went back to Tulsa, mm -hmm. and that's where I got involved in the drugs and um, got involved with somebody that I grew up with, and, you know, mm. we did drugs and stuff together. And he's a father of my daughter, um, okay. but he didn't want to stop. And I did. So we had to part ways. Right. And uh, okay. And so you got a 37 uh, and the other two are how old? 30 and 16. Okay. I got you. I got you. Now, uh, how did you get on to the, well, how did you get into the lifestyle that you're in now? Did you start? working with people or doing energy work or getting downloads or well like... uh now when i was really young when all that crazy stuff that was happening because i was hospitalized a lot um with broken bones and crushed uh, ribs and collapsed lungs and things of that nature Jesus so christ um i would see people <laughs> And to me, they were my imaginary friend. And um, now I now I know that that's they weren't my imaginary friend. They were spirit. Um, and this, when this I was in the my, hospital, in the hospitals, yeah. when you, were, mm -hmm. yes. I've heard people say that before. And um, you know, I I was never taught about God, so that was something that was just not talked about. My great grandmother would just tell me, Jesus loves you. And I always wondered, well, who is this Jesus dude you keep talking about? Uh, but she would always get shut up and shut down uh, if my grandmother or my mother heard her talk. And um, so I told my mom what I was seeing and that I was hearing things. So she put me in a place. I was six, almost seven, six or seven. Um, it, it's it's closed down now, thank goodness, um, or that the way it was then. I think it's open now for just medical reasons. But it was children, uh, CMC, Children's Medical Center, and uh, they did all kinds of tests and all kinds of just, it was, 
pretty a hor horrendous event. So um, I just kind of kept everything to myself from that moment going forward. And so, uh, so she she uh, put you in this place as a result of you telling her that you were seen. Uh, yes. Okay. And so they were they were in the dark, <laughs> and you were having yeah. to, to deal with that. Okay. Yeah. And um, in fact, uh, one of the spirits died in front of me in there in that place. So I said, well, we're not going to talk about this anymore. A, and a, I always, the spirit died in front of you? What do you mean? Yeah, I watched the spirit OD. So I guess that's the way that they passed. Um, and I, I was afraid to say anything to anybody. So I just kind of shut down. I still would listen uh, to things that were being said to me. Right. I can't tell you the amount of times that different places and the type of people in the environment that I should not even be here right now. Um, and, you know, spirit has gotten me out of it. Angels have gotten me out of it. Um, but I just kind of, you know, kept everything to myself. I didn't speak of anything that happened to me until I turned 30. Okay. Okay. And, um, I finally, um, so, brought that to you know was able to talk about it so you uh, totally shut down mm -hmm, from totally. from yeah like whatever uh that point really it was it yeah. would have been that point so that was before you yeah god that you were what six is that what you said yeah when they put me in that place it was it was horrendous it was i can still smell to this day i can smell that place yeah, it was crazy. There was adults everywhere. There wasn't little people like me. <laughs> so I remember getting in trouble because uh, I never liked shoes. And I walked around without shoes. And that was against the rules. So they had what they called the shit room. And um, the, what? the what room? The shit room. And if you did something wrong, you got put in the shit room. And I didn't really even know what that meant until I got put in it for not wearing shoes and um now i understand but uh then i understood why they called it that um it was just the the abuse that they, you would see them do to some of the other people because some of them were not okay i mean like this one lady all she did was rock and comb the hair on her legs and and sing the same line over and over and over and you know you just have it was just crazy and so I just shut down and then from talking to people, but spirit, I still had so much abuse to get through um, and spirit was always there for me. And um, hey, God, this is, this is intense. I'm sorry. No, I no, know. no. I, it's such a, it's such a uh, <clears throat> interesting, intriguing uh yeah. So you're, 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 I'm just trying to really feel this. I mean, it, I, it's easy to do with you. Uh, <clears throat> so you're six years old and you're put in this place. I know what kind of place you're talking about. Um, I've not spent, uh, you know, more than just a short period of time, but uh, I've, I've worked as a, as a, a patient, but I have worked in uh, uh, one particular facility, I did a, a project and I it was a real eye opener. Now this would have been, this would have been the early or mid nineties, which you would think we were pretty advanced back then, but I think you're talking about a time period that's, that um, in certain places it, it still things were, but it just, and I, when you said the smell, uh, that's what I remember the most out of everything I kind of witnessed and the people that I came into contact with. I did not understand at the time, uh, the, you know, like, like energy and uh, entities and, um, you know, just that kind of thing. Uh, but I have met many friends that uh, have had experiences. Uh, you know, even, even a friend of mine, uh, 1987 
uh, meet six or seven star seeds in the facility and, and figured out she was all right. Now, so you, you had that, that must have, that was a really big, big uh, template or in your template was that six-year-old thing. And then of course, the rest of the things that you told us before you went back, Did, you were talking about how the angels and how spirit saved you many times. Um, some people, when they, or most of the people I've talked to, when they talk about these traumas that in, in, you know, in the end, help strengthen their connection to to spirit or their other aspects or whatever um but i've not uh, yours sounds more like they were actually there with you talking to you and you were in your body because a lot of the people i've talked to talk about how they that's how when they left their body yeah no this was this was right there you know uh physically I, I remember several times of being pushed by angels, um, getting me out of the way of things. Um, and it's um, it, it's quite amazing now that I look back because I didn't realize it at the time. You know, I just knew that I couldn't speak on what, because hmm. I didn't want any more testing. I mean, because they would, keep you up for 24 hours, put these things on your head, make they you were, drink stuff. And it was all kinds of weird testing. Yeah. Well, they were experimenting with you. Yeah. And and that's what they did. Um, unfortunately. And they actually yeah. did it on a wide scale. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize in the 1800s, 17, 18, 16, 17, 18. I mean, all the, these places were huge yeah. and they'd be in the middle of nowhere. You know, they st if you study it or research a little bit, you, it's it's an amazing, wild kind of thing, kind of frightening. Um, but you, but in your case, like I've had, I've had in, uh, at least, you know, I know quite a few actually. It, where, but where I was conscious at the time, even before I kind of reawoke, where uh, a hand to move me, and I knew what it was or move my yeah. bike onto the street so I don't get hit by a car. That sounds like kind of what you're talking about, but you're also talking about conversing with them. Yes. You said you would even hear them when you kind of turned off the visual, um, if that's what you were saying. But like, what kind of things would you hear? Um, there was a lot of comfort. Um, and um, <laughs> I remember being told how life was a movie. And okay. don't be afraid. Um, you, you, what was it? Life is a movie. Don't be afraid. Um, something to the effect of, you know, the movie changes more towards the end. Mm. It gets better. That kind of stuff. A lot of re, uh, reassurance. Because I really didn't understand what love was. Um, I thought I had family members that loved me, but, you know, I, my father, my grandmother, they could have gotten me at any point in time and took me in. Right. right. So, and they, they knew what was going on and, you know, it was a blind eye. So at the time I thought that was, that was love, but to really, as I got older and you hear my children are starting to grow up. They're starting to turn the ages that I was when all this started happening. A lot of things were triggering me. I was getting a lot of triggers. And I started drinking even more. Um, and um, my boss is like, Tony, I think you're an alcoholic. I so said, you, you, gave up the, you gave up the drugs at 18, but you kept drinking. Yeah. Okay, I got you. And... Um, he said, yeah, I want you to go to this place and I want you to, um, you know, get you some help. I said, okay. And I knew that I had triggers inside of me and I knew what it was, but I hadn't shared it with anybody. And um, because there was a lot of, you know, 
I saw a lot of really screwed up things, a lot of death, a lot of human trafficking, a lot of, a lot, a lot of bad things. And um, so when I get to this place, it was a beautiful place in Summit, Mississippi. He flew me out there and um, I did all the testing. They're like, you're not an alcoholic, honey. <laughs> Sounds like you have PSTD. <laughs> and um, so I went to a different area where there was nurses from the Oklahoma City bombing. There was vets. There was, um, you know, a lot of these kind of, you know, individuals in there. And so I did work with them instead of like the alcoholics in, or the drug addicts area. And uh, they got me to talk. And um, when I did my whole body shut down, my blood pressure dropped. I started having convulsions. I just, um, it, it was crazy. They had to watch me for a couple of weeks uh, because my body went right back into that, that stage of fear. And it was so intense. And, uh, and, and I remember, you know, I had really blocked out the angels a lot as I was drinking and carrying on because I knew that this wasn't right to be drinking, you know, and, uh, but they were right there again. And, um, but it wasn't until my mother got very sick and um, which was really hard to partake in her care and be there uh, because of all the crazy things that she allowed to happen to me and my brothers, my sister. And um, my brother was raised by my grandmother, but she still did a lot of messed up things. And, um, you know, I didn't really have anything to do with this woman and here she's gonna die. And um, my sister's kind of alone at it, my brother's, you know, often never, never land, um, and with drinking and drugs, and um, so I told my sister I would help her, and so I had to kind of, like, change my focus, and not look at her like my mother, but look at her as a person she was. She was an old, frail, sick woman that needed help, and I removed the whole idea of her being my mother uh, from me, and in doing that, allowed me to find the compassion to forgive and get on a good space with her before she did pass. Um, but I was getting, she had passed on Halloween and I, we were getting ready to go to Oklahoma for her because um, I would drive back every other weekend to help my sister. And um, so I pulled like a, a triple shift so I could have the time off and had that with my bereavement and I started feeling really bad and next thing I know an ambulance is taking me to the hospital a piece of my colon broke off and so I was in ICU for a little bit so I missed her funeral um, but I was able to hear it over the phone and man in the hospital um, I had I had to have some drains put in so that was the first surgery and then they had to go in and do an, a colon obstruction surgery. Um, and that was a massive surgery. Um, and now everything's just flooding back and flooding back uh, with connection. And I'm pushing it away, pushing it away, thinking, okay, now that, you know, I'm on all kinds of medications and pain meds and things of that. I got 46 staples, you know, I'm down they busted me open like I had open heart surgery. And um, and then I, it, I had a snowball of health issues for a couple of years. It, all together, I had four major surgeries in two years. And um, now, how old were you when this happened? Um, this is after the first two kids, before the third kid. Yeah, okay. um, 13, I want to say. 2013 so okay. okay I'm in my 30s yeah, okay. almost 40s I guess 40s yeah um I never really cared I paid attention to my age 
<laughs> yeah, no, I was just trying to get because you had yeah, you I, had I three mean, kids, and I was trying. I to... forget. I forget how old I am sometimes. <laughs> I don't even pay attention. I know. I don't. My kids get mad. They're like, "What year were you born?" I'm like, "I guess you'll find out when I die." <laughs> but um, anyway, I started getting better, and um, was able to get to work. I couldn't do. I couldn't run the restaurants like I was. I was a GM of. Uh, rest, I was a GM of Taco Bueno for nine years, IHOP for quite a few years, Ryan Steakhouse. I ran three kitchens. I, I did a lot of restaurant work, but I couldn't do that kind of work anymore. And so I started working from home. And then my husband got sick. And um, within four months of him being sick, I had to put him in hospice and he passed. He was 32. And, um, and then five months later, my brother was found dead in his apartment. And I identified him after being, he was decomposed for about two, a little over two weeks. And mm. so I started going down this really dark, dark um, spiral um, because I was hell bent on being there with my husband. So I was there next to the machine when he was put in the incinerator. Um, the guy even let me turn it on. Um, it was a big deal for me to do that. One, for him not uh, to, to do that wifely duty all the way to the end. Um, and we had a case here in Texas. I don't know if you ever heard about it, but it was big. There was a, a funeral home that was giving people back uh, animal ashes and not their loved ones remains. And it was a big thing. I mean, they had like stacks of bodies that they hadn't incinerated. And, and I was like, oh, well, if that's what we're doing, then I'm going to be there, make sure that that's what I'm getting back. And the director's like, no, you don't have to worry about that. Dada. Okay, thank you. But I'm going to be there. I'm going to, I'm going to walk to the last step with my husband. And, um, but it was, I was dealing with that. Okay. It was my brother, um, that really kind of messed me up because of how deformed and morbid he looked. I could tell by a few of his tats who he was. Um, but it was just so morbid. It's, it's nothing like you see it on TV <laughs> and, uh, and the smell, hmm. because he had not, you know, they couldn't embalm him at that point, right? Um, and because he'd been dead so long. And so I just kind of, I was very suicidal. I was like, you know what? I'm just really tired of this. My son had just turned 10. And I uh, wrote like, a goodbye letter. I had my bottle of pills and I kept it under my pillow. And every night I said, okay, tonight's the night I'm going to do it. And, and then I would feel a presence. And then, you know, then my son would come running in and it's like, no, no, not tonight. And then I started having all kinds of weird things happen at the house. I kept finding finding piles of feathers, not just one or two, but piles um, outside, uh, outside on the porch, at the back door, outside where I step out of my car. And I'm thinking, well, there's some cat around here killing birds. And as I'm sweeping it up, there's no, there's no carcass. It, it, it's not a bird. It's just feathers. And um, <laughs> this is so crazy. Um, when your spouse dies, you kind of remember the stupid stuff that you argued about. It comes back and haunts you. That's why I always tell people, don't argue about the stupid shit because it will come back to haunt you. Those will be the things that you remember. And I remember giving my husband a hard time about, you know, those covers that you put over food for the microwave, right? Mm -hmm. And he would use it. it. Took me forever to get him to use it. My husband was a uh, full-blood uh, Hispanic, right? So he finally started using it, but he would never put it back in the microwave. And I'm like, why don't you just put it back in the microwave? You already got it open. And um, 
and it's on top of the microwave and I go to open it and there's feather inside. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, DJ, did you put a feather in here? It's like, no, 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 no. The next day I wake up with all kinds of change on my bed and I go to work in my office and there's a feather on my keyboard. Now, what kind of work were you doing at that time? Uh, uh, customer service. I was, uh, I did okay. Xbox. I was a, okay. uh, yeah. So you were, you were working customer right. support that was for Xbox. Very smart. Okay. And, um, and then my son came and, uh, ran back out and went right up the tree. And I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, mom, I can talk to dad up here. So he would climb up the tree that him and his dad climbed together. And he said he could talk to his dad up there. And I was like, okay, well, I've got to investigate this. No, stuff. He's, <laughs> he's what? Six, seven. He's like 10 that. at the time. 10, 10. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was like, man. So I started getting into this um, realm. Um, now, mind you, I'd always kind of tapped into my intuition and guidance for people that I cared about or that had problems or whatever. But I never did cards. I never did anything like anything. But, like but, that. but people that you knew well enough uh, knew that you had some kind of uh, sight or sensitivity. Yes, exactly. Or, I did. Okay, I got you. And you and you obviously... Uh, if you were comfortable enough, you would, you would go ahead and pursue yeah, that. I would, okay, good. Yeah. Um, and but especially then, running a pool hall, you know, I had a lot of people that would come to me, you know, that could pick up on, and then they, the, the word would get around, you know. Right. But, now, um, and, and up to this point, uh, I mean, on, on any large scale, no, no angels, no ETs, no um, anything like that you're 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 intuitive and you know things is that kind of how it is yeah exactly and so once I got into this realm I was like well I was seeing how people would do mediumship and well how, how did now how did you get into the realm so your son goes up the trees talking to your 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 uh, transition husband and you go into your office and you've got all these uh feathers everywhere which is fascinating um, and you just started researching? Yes, oh, okay. I started researching and uh, Facebook at that time was a good source um, to kind of look up things. It, it wasn't what it is now. Um, but, um, and then I found all these groups and all these psychics in there and, you know, post a picture and da, 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 da. And uh, I did it, got robbed left and right. Um, a few connected to my mother or my brother, but nobody was connecting to my husband. They would say they were, and they would say something that's completely off. And, and, and it, it became very frustrating. And it, um, I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to connect with them myself. And so I, um, I got hooked up with um, three different people. They taught me different aspects like there was this lady over in scotland that taught me about energy um i had this uh guy he was teaching me about the clairs and just all the other information that you needed and then uh i had another lady that was teaching me how to work with tools and things of that nature and so um i started doing that and um and and it just opened, I mean, just, and, um, and I was able to connect and I was like, wow, okay. So um, I was, they kind of kept pushing me, Tanya, you should really read for other people. You should do lives, you should go out there. And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know if I really want to do all that, you know, but I eventually did. And, um, and I took a, like I said, I, I had those three mentor me and I took a lot of classes, studied, um, got read and researched everything I could get my hands on. 
to try to get a big scope of things uh, because it was also important to learn the dark. And, right. And so that way you'd know what that was coming at you. And so I was researching everything. Um, and I had to learn the hard way about energy and, um, you know, connecting with it. And because I, I could allow a spirit to come on to a pendulum and answer questions for people, their loved ones, um, which turned out to be a horrible thing to do. Um, because then I was feeling however that person felt, however they died, I would feel that for a couple of days. So it, it wasn't something I was really that um, able to control that much. So, um, but then I um, started doing what I do now and it's, it's just grown. Uh, I was on a live and then my, you know, I was, spirit was able to give me something to taste, something to smell. And then when I started about two years ago, I started, no, a little bit longer than that. I had to, I lost my house that we had and I had to come start all over and, and move in with my daughter, sleep on her floor until uh, we could get back on our feet. Um, so it was several years back, um, but I had always been in the house when I'd done this work. So I, I think that I was more protected in that house. And being out where other energies have been, because uh, I wasn't leaving my house very much, um, caused me to start seeing spirit. And then a few years ago, I started doing some uh, paranormal investigations and stuff with a team that I'm, because I do a holistic event every other month. And I met them out there and we go and do. Where, um, where are you at now? I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Okay, you're in Fort Worth, all right. Yeah, um, so that really kind of, so the only thing I haven't been able to do and I don't want to do is, um, you know, move things with, you know, and I don't care to do that. Oh, like telekinesis? Um, like telekinesis. Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't so, care for the one. So you, you went out, you started to venture out, you started picking up more energies, you start seeing energies and entities well actually seeing spirit because it comes in many different forms okay it's never like they they try to tell you like these mediums will say oh i see a little short lady with you know <laughs> it's like no they don't look like that <laughs> they don't so um, okay so what happened when you first started like uh going whoa i've been seeing this sensing this now i'm seeing it did it freak you out Oh yeah, it did. It, it, it happened to me on the live too. All of a sudden this, that, that spirit was in my face and I was like, oh my, um, I didn't really know how to react at first. Um, you know, I learned about boundaries and things, but I had already opened my space. Um, and anybody that watches me do my readings, I'm very, I learned a long time ago to be very respectful to spirit and how to open up your circle. And, you know, I, I do it with the, the directions of the four archangels. I pray. And then when I'm done with the live, I close the circle. I mean, I've had my, I've gone live and not done it try, and, and then try to speak and I can't speak. I've had them shut my voice completely off. So um, it, it's, um, what do they look like to you? Well, it just what which ones? The loved ones? Well, the, or which just go through them, the different types. Okay, I mean, well, some are orbs. Okay. Some are shadowy figures. Some have uh, no color. Some have bright colors. Some are. Um, uh, you don't ever get like a full definition of their face right but you can get a, a little bit definition of their body um so i think it you know i've, I've asked my husband to take me on a lot of astral tra travels and i've seen a lot of things on the other side and you know it just kind of depends on where that soul is on their journey once they go on that other side 
uh, because it's not a matter of heaven or hell. It's a matter of light or shunned away from the light. It's it's that simple. And um, you know, now, do you do you feel like that? Uh, um, I don't know. I guess I mean I've uh, I've had my own experience uh, in what I would call the astrals. Um, or the astral plane, or uh, I, I always felt like it was kind of the plane between what people call 3D and 5D. Because um, I noticed it was very different there. Like when I first reawoke in 2011, I spent probably, um, I don't know, I'd say, you know, like a year to a year and a half um, being connected with souls that had transitioned that hadn't gone as they explained it to me then, hadn't gone into the healing heaven. So they were kind of stuck. Like most of them were somehow or another egoically or remote, you know, stuck to the earth plane, but they weren't physically in a body, so on. Um, and then later on, that kind of went away and there was uh, other things started happening, you know, such as, you know, nature, um, yeah, I departed loved ones, uh, and uh, and then on to other things too. This all over the place, dark and light. But yeah. do, do what, I mean, is that is that pretty much like your niche is 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 working with people that um, you know come to to your events or comes to you your live or you know to you personally? Do you, you help them with? with any type of energy work or is it specific to certain things in certain people? Yeah, I do kind of an array of different things. Um, see, I, I, I feel that uh, I've created a very close relationship with my team, my spiritual team. Right. And uh, I know them. Um, there's certain parts of my body or certain ways I'll feel things and I'll know who's coming up and who's helping me. Right. Um, you know, I, I kind of set that very early and as well as with the angels. So when I do mediumship, when I'm doing mediumship, the purpose of that is to help people twofold to let them understand that death is not final. Right. So they can, process that because that's the hardest part about grief um and that the loved one's okay even if the loved one's not all the way to the light or hasn't gone and done their review they're still okay there's no torture going on that that mentality of hell and torture unless that's what the person believes would happen to them and then they will experience that so faith uh and beliefs uh Play a big portion in what's happening to us over there and so, until we release that just like here until we release the the things that bind us our belief systems or however we were raised until we release that we're not free on either plane um but it's to help them heal um uh, because that's why you don't see me do a whole lot of lives with um mediumship uh, because, um, and, and uh, there's so many people out here working, uh, and they feed on that desperation. I know. And, I know. um, I've, I've said in on yours, yours are different. I know, I, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about and I, I don't want to throw shade on anybody, but yeah, I'm not either. Um, I just, no, 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 no you're, I know you're, I know you're energy. not. Yeah. And I don't want to bring that energy to me. I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know that how desperate it feels to be the person on the other side of the phone. I know how desperate it feels to want that message. Yeah. And um, if I get so caught up in doing that, because I believe everybody that can connect with spirit, that can truly connect, probably started there, but they sold themselves out. Just like anything. It's just like anything else. You know, just like uh, people, you know, artists, they can sing really good. They can write music. They get in the scene and boom, they sell themselves out. Next thing you know, they're owned, bought and, and paid for, right? 
Right. Same thing happens in our psychic community. Right. Uh, so I don't tap it as much. People come to me uh, every now and then. I'll bring out my box, or because um, I have a spirit box, and I and I I can bring spirit in to connect to a loved one and, and do the confirmations that they need, um, or I'll do mediumships every once in a while. Um, but my main focus, if that's what someone needs. Um, my main focus is trying to get people to remember, not teach them anything, but just get them to remember what they already know. And, and um, these are powerful tools to be able to inspire and encourage someone to go for, to push themselves further. And especially, so that's what I focus a lot on. You especially, know, I coming, have, especially coming from someone like you. Who's yeah. had to who's gone through I mean you didn't go through specifics you mentioned bones and ribs broken and but I'm yeah. sure you went you I'm sure you left out a whole lot oh um, yeah <laughs> yes um, um how did you get <laughs> oh I'm sorry go ahead I thought it, you were... well and I also do work with people like um like I do I do have a mentorship program but it's a it, it's not your average mentorship program because um, there's so many people out of here willing to teach people to do things, but they're not paying attention if that person's healed or not enough to do what they're, you're pushing them, allowing what you're partaking in them learning. And if they are not, you are setting them up for a whole nother level of hell. And this is where people believe that they got attachments, you know, they're dealing with demons, um, you know, all kinds of dark stuff, because spirit is just spirit. It's not dark or light like everybody right. talks about. Right. It just is. And they both have the same amount of power. There's not one greater, more stronger than the other. It's just the love frequency is what's strong not it's not the angels are stronger than the demons it has nothing you know and the demons are doing their job that's the demon's job mm -hmm. the angels are doing their job um but they don't teach that so when you come into like a, something with me we're going to sit down we're going to talk and i'm going to allow spirit to speak and you're going to tell me what it is that you're looking for and what it is that you want i might even turn you away you know, um, because if you're just, you know, if you're hell bent on um, learning to read cards, but yet you you lack self confidence, I'm not going to do you any service by teaching you to read cards so you can jump up and do that and have a person tear you down and rip you down to shreds. You got to have some sort of self confidence messing with spirit, you know, because it's a fad now, right? Oh, look, let me grab the book. Look, I can read a card, you know. It's a fad. And um, so I try to in, intertwine that. You know, um, I have a few people, and I only do so many at a time anyway. I'm, I'm, do, you, but, do, you, do you feel like, uh, uh, okay, so two, two things. One, um, your team, and you were talking about how you feel cer certain things in your body uh, you, that tell you which part or which member or which aspect i guess maybe do you feel uh -huh. like the, do you feel like that that team is inside of you or something outside of you no it's outside of me okay. except for my higher self you know okay. um, and who and and when you were hearing uh when you were hearing words or voices you know through your story uh, especially when you were younger was that your soul do you feel like that was your soul your higher self, no, that was so? outside. That was outside, okay. Yeah, that was outside. And, and have have the team members ever told you who they are? Do they feel like relatives? Uh, no, because relatives really can't be a part of your spiritual team. They can walk with you, but they can't. Okay. Like we have one. Um, but I meant, one I, I meant like uh, I meant like uh, I should have not like blood relatives. I meant like like oh. soul soul family. Oh, yeah. Well, your number one has been with you since you've been created. You've got the, your number one 
a spirit guide. All the others can come and go according to what um, lessons you are needing to learn or have learned. Uh, but that number one from the moment of your creation has been with you every lifetime, every lifetime, and will be with you any other lifetimes going on out. That's why it's really important to get to, to know who they are and know their names and know, know, hmm. uh, know stuff about them. You know, so a lot look, of people so, say, well, so, I know who my spirit guide is, but they uh, can't tell you that person's name. They can't tell you anything about that spirit guide. And what they need to understand is that may not be always on a good side, right? And this is, um, this is why it's important to know. Um, and you have to invest the time into yourself, into your meditations, work with somebody that can help you. Um, but you've got to, you've got to invest that. You can't just say, I want to connect with my spirit guides and boom, I'm connected. Um, because when you say, I want to connect to spirit, you'll connect to a spirit. There's no question, but is it the right spirit? That's what needs to be mm -hmm. decided. And you can see that because of life choices people make. You can tell it very quickly by the life choices. Um, meaning, you know, are they consistent in their behavior? Do they treat people? How, do they, how are they treating other people? That type of thing. Uh -huh. You know, um, people say, um, a lot of times people think their thoughts are downloads. Um, you know, it, it's really, you can get more from your higher self than you would ever get a download. Um, the right. downloads come more in a, private setting of you know deep meditation type of thing hmm. it's not just setting it oh my goodness review the updated i you hear There's, that that was trippy yeah, uh, i said the word privacy and it kicked on what <laughs> <laughs> so okay so that's a cool explanation uh and then so when you were when you were now it's when you were young you you appealed to the angels specifically, or did they just show up? Uh, no, they just showed up. I had no idea of faith or any of that. Okay. And were they, was it the archangels or was it other angels? Well, yeah, there was, now I know it was a couple archangels, mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, it was just different angels i mean i didn't know i was very Can young you, so no idea yeah i was just curious i'm just thinking like my, yeah. i'm thinking back to my whole journey and, and just thinking yeah. about things and uh See, like archangels come into our life if, if we have an archangel assigned to us that's because they've saved our life at some time they've stepped in and saved us oh yeah and um you know i'm I'm blessed with this beautiful board that one of my followers made me and I can do those readings and it's, it's an amazing reading. I don't do it very often and I don't do it just for anybody. What is it? And I can tell you how many past lives, how many archangels, how many guardian angels. All really? That. Oh yeah. And, and wow, that's pretty cool. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Now? It's beautiful <laughs> reading. It really is a beautiful how reading and I can get you the first name. The uh -huh. name of your number one spirit guide, but all the others you have to find out on your own. I can tell you how many you have, but you've got to go find out their names. And not all names are going to make sense to us because yeah. of the language changes over time. Yeah. But um, that's interesting. How, how long? Uh, that would be cool. I'd like to do that. <laughs> oh, it's about an hour and a half reading. Well, the reason I'd like to do it is because, because I don't understand all this stuff, you know, and obviously I've talked to a well, lot I'd of people. I'd love to do over. one for you. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Uh, well, and part of the reason is because not to, uh, but just to, because to me, every, there's everyone, no perspective is the same. No experience yeah. is the same, but I think we're all saying the same thing. We're all just different pieces or whatever, but I yeah. remember uh, very specific. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, 
sorry about that. The chat's not working on the show. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so, uh, but there was specific, there was, there was, um, you know, there was 24 of these and there was, uh, there was uh, three of these and there was six of these and there was 12 of these, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 uh, and, and I think pretty much, I don't remember all the names, but I remember, I remember a good part of them. And there was different, there was different layers. Now, I don't know, I, I'm not, I'm kind of hesitant to, to, to speak about it, but it, because I don't, I've never taken everything, li uh, anything literal, you know, I just never have. Um, I know it has, I know it's a truth, you know, but I, but I don't, because to me, it's more like you're getting information or code or something, right. Or, or synchronicity or something, but, um, but yeah, I can remember uh, having long conversations and spending a lot of time with with, with different guides, and um, and then it felt like they, you know, they 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 talk about embodiment or whatever. It wasn't anything I tried to do. I just noticed that they started to feel like they were here in here, you know, yeah. in me and. Uh, Yet I always marvel about that because you're 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 there and I'm here. So why would that be any different, you know, than um, than you know with the non-physical uh, energy or entity or soul? You know what I mean? Because yeah. like even like you know Morgan and I've had uh, two clear situations, probably more, but two where uh, invisible light, translucent beings. Which I guess I would say, when you get right down to it, could be seen as as holograms. Now they were full definition, full everything. They weren't they weren't standard humans. One of them looked like like that, but the rest of them were galactic, you know, kind of things, humanoid. Uh, so I always wonder about these things. And then I know people that have actually seen full body, physical you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Uh, and I know these people uh, and they're as credible as anyone I've ever met. Now I'm speaking of like, say three specific instances just off the top of my head. Um, so I don't know. It's, I have a feeling though, that these things that you're, uh, uh, you know, kind of like uh, getting me to think about, I have a feeling that a lot of this stuff is going to be more understood or revealed soon. I just have yeah. a feeling. Do you, do you feel that way? Oh, yes, it will be. Um, if we if we focus more on everybody's so worried. <laughs> Everybody's so worried about getting people awake and let's wake everybody up. Let's get all this information out there, but which is fine. Yeah. But it's not getting people prepared to be able to handle that information. And I think, I think that's a good point. Let's talk about that. So. And that's what I really try to focus on. That's why I focus so much on you know, uh, you know, all my stuff in my groups. Like I have a group that is nothing but a library of information. It's not really for you to go in and post. If you're looking for something, go in that group and check out the guides or check out the albums. You know, there might be something in there to help you. Um, like so walking you, into the library. Um, so you emphasize getting a person to a place that they can handle uh, the level of revealing or disclosure or whatever. Exactly. Now, okay, so now when you're working with them, are you more focused on um, the things that are going to be revealed to them or unveiled or disclosed in the external? Or is it the stuff that they're going to find out about themselves 
Both. as as the traumas are removed and there's basically their superpowers come in or their sensitivities start to come in right but both okay. uh, because um if you know when all this started coming about in 2020 i sat down and i asked to to see what was in store and I really regretted asking that. And I don't, I don't talk about it because it's not, I'm not gonna be one of those people that say, well, see, I told you this was gonna happen or this, because it's irrelevant. Because that's just everything that we can see going forward is not set in stone. That is just the way the energy is going at this time. We can alter that. Energy shifts and changes with every breath. So that's why I'm not really um, keen on the ideas that are being pushed out into the spiritual community, the hero mentality. We get so caught up in the hero mentality that um, we lose ourselves um, because we're not here to, we're here to learn, love, and grow, evolve our soul. And the the, the very thing that everybody's talking about that they want to create is already created. That is life in spirit. Right. It will never be on 3D. It cannot physically be on 3D. 3D is 3D for a reason. And we come back, we leave that perfect world of abundance and um, no wars and all that, just love, peace, and harmony, right? We leave that to come back to this. Why do we do that? So we can evolve because you can't evolve in that environment. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So everybody likes to put these hopes in people of, okay, well, there's a new world and we're creating this and we're creating that. No, we're not. We're actually, we've been here many times before. We get this advanced and we destroy ourselves. So we're yeah. back in the very fork in the right. road. Right. And it's whether or not do we do we evolve or do we destroy ourselves again? And the very thing that causes this, because everybody is really mad at the government or the school system or this or that, but nobody is looking at, okay, what did we do as right. a collective to create this? Because yeah, we did create it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And everything can go back to convenience. Everything that is malfunctioned and screwed up once started out as something convenient. And I use the school system as a good example of that. Um, because when the school system was started, right, it was it wasn't to indoctrinate the children. That's not how the school system, if you know your history and you really, you know, have done the study, when the industrial revolution came out and they were bringing people from the farms into the cities, the parents were working and the kids had nobody watching them. And so they right. just got into trouble and they missed you. So they created a school, a place for them to go. And then it developed, oh, well, we can teach them to read and write. And then, so the, here's this convenient, great thing that started. And what happened? Just like with everything, our food, uh, the chemtrails, I mean, you, human trafficking, it can go to every single thing. Something, the convenience of it, because now we got convenience here. So we don't got to worry about that. That's taken care of over there. So we fell to pay attention. We fell to hold people accountable we fail to do anything because we are we're in comfort now who's in and, comfort <laughs> you know what i mean we're, we're no no I, no I get what you're saying i, I get yeah, what you're saying so that is that is the problem that humanity has to break you can't you can't get now the school system now people are upset about the school system because of what they're trying to put into the school system with the, um, all the other education they're trying well, to Well, I mean, there. but isn't this but, the but isn't this the narrative? 
isn't this at the end of the day, a, as they say, a war? I don't like, I don't really care for that word. Like yeah. a war on consciousness. Uh, right. A war on. It always a war has on, been. Yeah, of course it has. But I yeah. mean, but I mean, a war on your uh, attention, basically. I want to go back to what you were talking about there just a second ago before we go further okay. with this. Uh, uh, so you were talking about that that your focus is to prepare the people for the great revealing uh, as much outside of themselves uh, uh, as within themselves. Um, now, in, in terms of like, because I mean, obviously, again, I've talked to so many different people, not everybody sees the same thing, not everybody, you know, da, 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 da. but you've got a Native American um, biological 100% <laughs> makeup. Uh, that seems to be a big part of um, many people's uh, spiritual makeup be it uh, Aboriginal, be it some type of indigenous, right? Uh, my three spirit guides that that I know that were, you know, introduced to me when I reawoke um, were all from, they were all uh, family members from previous incarnation as, as an indigenous in America. Um, so there seems for me to be like some kind of, like I see all these aspects as as a part of me that I carry with me, or or at least I, I'm able to connect to that if I can, like you said, put in the time, or if something shows itself um, intuitively, you just know, you know, to, to to go down that road, or sometimes it's just given to you. But I was wondering, like, when you work with people, uh, in in in. Uh, getting them ready for, for what's coming, so to speak. Do you teach them um, how to access uh, things? Like how to access information or, or whatever you want to call it, energy. How to yeah. access uh, responsibly, safely, et cetera. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it like a is it like a, a, a certain approach or is it depends on the person and it just kind of comes? It to depends you. on the person. Everything spirit led. Mm. So I don't have a one set way of doing anything. It's once I connect with that person and whatever spirit is leading for them, because what might work for one will not work for the other. Um, mm -hmm or it might do more damage for the other where it would right. be a great advancement for another, you know? So um, I, I think it's very important that, at least for me, mm -hmm. that I pull myself out of that role and allow spirit to do its job. Right, right. You're a conduit, and, yeah. Yeah, I'm just a conduit. And that's what I tell people all the time. Yeah. I'm just a conduit. Yeah. I, you know, that's it. Um, you know, you know, I could, you know, do, oh yeah, I know all this stuff and I can teach you, you know, do your Kundalini and I can teach you this and this <laughs> and this, but you know, Have I'm you, not teaching you anything. Right. You're just, just remembering what yeah. you already know. I'm just helping you remember. Have you, and I'm not even helping oh. you. Spirit's helping you remember. Right. They're just using me to do that. Yeah. Do you feel like, do you, do you connect with their higher self in these sessions? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, have you had any experience with elementals, nature beings, galactics, or anything else? Uh, elements, yes. I work with elements. And I work with, um, um, if we'll go back to the shaman men mentality, the lower realms, the middle, and the higher. Uh, as for galactics and things of that nature, no. And what about no like what about to. what about like elementals, fairies, leprechauns, oh, yeah. dragons? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you obviously seem very organic. That's pretty much how I've always felt about myself. Um, although I will say, as time has gone on, the the level of memory expands. 
and, yes. and you start to remember because I mean it, I get the whole thing about I mean I, I feel that I'm very familiar with earth uh, I've got my own my own you know whatever coding or whatever uh, but I feel like that um, somebody's about to rip a huge band-aid off and oh yeah <laughs> and uh, and it feels like it's this year. <laughs> it feels like it's probably this summer even. Do you have a feel for the collective nature of what's going on or what's going to happen? Not not to get into predictions or anything like that, but your team told you that it's you know early in your life as you were telling us this that this is very uncool what's happening, uh, but it's just a movie and the end is really good. So did you get any information that you could share with us? Yeah, right now is really critical because of, of number one, the misinformation that, that we're all subjective to. Um, now, are you talking about misinformation? Uh, just across the board on anything. There's so much. I mean, yeah. when it comes to yeah. uh, any subject you can think of, there's misinformation out there somewhere about it, right? Yeah. So, um. This is why uh, I teach people that, you know, people say, oh, I listen to my intuition. No, you don't. Your intuition is that yellow light. It tells you to slow down. Mm -hmm. That light could turn red. Are you going to turn right, left, go forward? Are you going to turn around? That's what your intuition is. And that uh, once you listen to that intuition to slow down, then you can use your discernment, not judgment, discernment. And for those that are not able to use discernment, this is a big point that I try to push. I have a VIP group and that subscribers, and that's what I push at them all the time. Discernment, discernment. I'll even give them exercises, discernment, discernment, because you have to, in order to survive what's coming, you're going to need to know how to use your discernment. You're going to need to know how. Do you, do you feel help. like, do you feel like that they're going to need to, uh, or, or we will need to have a, a higher, the highest sense of discernment because part of what we're going to start to experience is um, what we might consider uh, today as things we've never seen uh to include uh i don't know to include entities or energies in exactly. some physicality okay yeah, now not, now not this is interesting this is interesting so so because i know people like that haven't had like galactic uh you know connection or or you know they don't, they don't really you know resonate or, or just doesn't come in um but they'll talk about how those things are being revealed or will be revealed. Now you don't, you don't, that isn't, you're more the elemental angelic thing. Uh, what do you think we might see as an example or experience as an example that would not, you know, that would be something, you know, from what your, your uh, information. Yeah. Well, just it. Just for the record, the reason why I've never gone to that route with the gal galactics, uh, aliens, UFOs, whatever you want to throw out there, uh, is because it, it, Spirit said no. Mm -hmm. That 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 is a distraction. That exists, mm -hmm. but the need for that connection, that need, is a distraction to keep you. Because if they can. If they're, it's, it's a very dangerous slope. I, I, I know where you're going with it. I know yeah, where you're going and, with it. And, um, and, and a lot of and, people, a lot of people wouldn't agree with that. Uh, but I get what you're saying. I, and I believe you from, because we really got, the, the discernment has everything to do with what I'm getting, <laughs> not what yeah. anyone's telling me. Um, and I'm really not, uh, to me, everything, um, 
to me, whether I can see him or not, wh whatever it may be, okay, uh, it's part of the physicality. It's part of this experience. That's that's it. You know, I mean, I I can walk outside and speak to the trees. I can speak to the rocks. I can speak to the wind. And occasionally I run into an interdimensional being in animal form or in holographic form or the angelics have, have you know, I haven't seen them in a long time, but they're, I know they're there. Uh, so I, I don't know how that all works. I, I, that's why I was just curious because um, one of the things that, that I find kind of impressive uh, about your story is your um, explanation of dark and light. That it's not really any separation there. It's all the same thing, right? Kind of thing. And so yeah. I'm all my uh, intuition or my soul or my higher self, whatever you want to call it, has always uh, told me at the end of the day, you got to be open. If you're shut down to anything, there's a reason. You know, like I know a lot of this galactic stuff for me was kind of held out there because it was too traumatic, too intense. Even talking to you, I had some things pop in, uh, yeah. memories and such. But but I guess what I'm saying is uh, you seem very open. Uh, you also seem very uh, like this is my field. This is this is where I operate in this incarnation. I know what my purpose is. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's to me that's big props to you on that. But do do you feel like that? Uh, do you feel like that that something's happening um, that everyone in the world is going to know about? And what what I mean by that is I'm talking way bigger than COVID and vaccines. And I'm not talking about yeah. dooms. I'm not talking about a doomsday thing. I'm just talking about really about awareness and uh, an expansion of consciousness that's affecting everyone? Uh, if we keep going on the path that we're going, no. Because what's... Uh, is the whole concept of spirituality is being hijacked. I don't think that there's not infiltration going on, just like any oh, other... Since day you know one. what I'm saying? And, and, I mean, ha half of the half of the light worker star seed platforms five years ago were owned were psyops. I would bet you it's even higher now, especially yeah. with all this AI. I notice a lot with I won't mention any names, but I notice it with two particular platforms that I really three that I've kept my eye on, and it's it you know the way to me to to tell is. If it's a psyops platform, it's it's if you really look at it, it's it's uh, how do you say this? It's not just giving one standard line. It's yeah, no. it's giving two, and they like it's almost like uh, oppositions to each other kind of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I think you're right about that. What what's what about your what what's your view on like people as we get. Uh, further into this that we're going to be kind of um coming together with with like-minded people soul tribe you know that type of thing i'm sorry what i repeat the question well like do, do you okay so with all this talk about embodiment and like you said you can't get away from being a human being that's why we came here we came here to learn. We came here to grow. We've messed it up a few times. And it's a lot more than people think Lemurian Atlantis and Avalon. And, you know, we're talking hundreds and hundreds, <laughs> right? And, uh, but like, uh, oh God, I forgot what I was asking you now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're almost at 90 minutes. We'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, are you getting to where people are like claiming angelic beings and that they are this or that? That is that no, what you were oh, going? I know, no, no, no. Where I was going was, well, I'm sorry. Okay, I got it back. That, okay, so for the last 10 plus years, let's just say, for a lot of people, give or take, you know, give or take, whatever, we've spent a lot of time 
out here, right? We spend mm -hmm. a lot of time in the ethers and dimension, you know, and all that stuff. And, and it's almost like we had to get these, this information turned on in us. And now there's a, now there's a, enough of us that we can, we can all say, Hey, we're kind of in the same space. Um, but my, my question was, I thought, I think about this a lot. Like, it doesn't scare me that the electricity goes out. It doesn't scare me that the internet goes out. It doesn't scare me that there's food and water sc uh, scarcity. It doesn't scare me a bit because I'm not afraid to die. Uh, and I think there's more and more and more people that are getting to that point because it's really right here, right? If I believe yeah. or if I'm fearful of it, you know what I mean? So I always kind of look at it and go, I wonder if we're going to come together in the physical under, under whatever, whatever reasons or whatever, you know, that causes that or creates that and find that, find that spirituality or find that uh, oneness and unity uh, by force, by force or by flow, or, you know, as far as the universe pushing you uh, to where we actually have to live together, you know, be in a tribe, like in the indigenous days. You know, like that type of thing. A lot of people talk about that. And a lot of people are trying to do uh, like communal living. Um, I just feel like there's something about the human contact that, you know, the, in other words, like we're looking at all these different things, right? All these different things, spirit guides, modalities, da 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 da, da you know what I mean? And, and, and I just find it sometimes that the universe uh, teaches in a paradoxical way. And, yeah. You know, and it ends up being, you know, us uh, <laughs> like the dogs chasing their own tail at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And th that's what a lot of it is. That's why it's, uh, there'll be many of us that will be able to, you know, bounce back from whatever is thrown out there. I mean, we're, we're human beings. We've conquered much worse than what we see now. And, you know, the things that, uh, we've gone through in history are much more horrific than now. There's some things that, um, you know, um, seem more horrific only because we see them and before we couldn't see them and now right. we can, but, um, but more will perish uh, due to the lack of uh, discernment due to uh, getting so wrapped up in learning and not living in the 3d right people talk um, about 5d as a place that we're going it's not it just drives me crazy 5d is just an awareness it's a it's an it's the eagle's view and even e and e even the 5d thing yeah is limiting is what yes yeah Limiting. because that's why there's six seven eight nine yeah. you know that's what i'm saying oh that's the highest that we can go in in our physical mind now astral traveling and different things of that nature we can go up higher realms but in the physical we can go to 5d the word ascension is so oh well they are they are, i mean all of ascension these things is death Okay, well, yeah. ascension is right. death. We will all ascend. We're right. not going to be vapored up into a ship. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go this way or that way to ascend mm -hmm. and to live this beautiful, peaceful world. We have this world in which we're in, and we must be able to create our own peace from within, which creates peace for all those around us. Mm -hmm. And the more that we do that, the more ripple effect that we have. Yeah. There will always be evil. There will always be human trafficking. There will always be rape. There will always be murder. There will always be these things because you have must see the heinous sea of evil to appreciate the majesty of love. And without it, you will never know the difference. So if we quit focusing on ascending, because basically you're saying, I want to die. Because that's what Jesus taught while he was here. That's why Jesus taught a you know, not to focus on ascension. He talked about focusing on the people and helping the people and being uh, not, not religion, right? Love your neighbor, to love. It all goes back to love because that's what everything really is. 
but we have to get away from all these distractions and be able to connect with ourselves. You have to heal your inner child to connect to you, to connect to your higher self. It comes in the powers of three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Everything comes in three. It's a miracle of the universe. All of it comes back together. And for you to be complete as an individual, you need to do a good inner child healing. Whatever broke you away from your connection when you started, need that you need to go back to that and heal that and learn the triggers, learn how to dissolve them if you can. And if you can't, how to know when they're coming on and control them, then you get connected to your higher self. And when you're aligned that way, you're aligned to the divine because that very, that very essence flows through your veins. But without that connection, you're going to be, you're going to be triggered not to go over here or not to do that, or this fads over here. And oh my God, the dollar, oh my God, you know, this or that. And you'll stay consistently um distracted and then you will be caught like the person laying on their deathbed going damn i wish i would have and it's should've gonna be like should have would have could have <laughs> oh no we're good uh yeah oh, all sorry. That. i'm sorry i went for rant. <laughs> no no it's it's cool i mean you know that's what it's all about to me i mean the, the more information but that's what i try to do you know because what good is it if I'm teaching you to become dependent on me to be able to get you to do well, things? Of course not. And that's the, the internet, old, the yeah, internet that's goes the down tomorrow. Yeah, that's the old. That's the old. Well, I mean, see, that's the way I look at it. Take everything away, and you yeah. have no children. Look what happened during COVID lockdowns. Look at that, and look at the look at the, and see here. Here we go again. I mean, you know, even using the word evil doesn't make any sense to me, because because we're in a simulation. You know, yeah. I mean, this is this is something that we're behind the grand design. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. Personally, I think I think you ascend and descend at the same time. I don't I don't I don't or I'm not going to say think I'm going to say something to think about. Something else to think about is yeah. how can you have light without dark? So what does that mean in our human experience? Does that mean there has to be a catastrophe every time, like a great flood or a comet hits the earth? Is that actually a bad thing? How do we know what happens to the souls when those things occur? How do we know that they weren't, uh, you know, uh, transforming at a biological level and became a light body in that instant? You know, if you read... Uh, some of the old, old uh, texts, not just Christianity or Judaism, but you read uh, uh, what's it, like in India. Um, there, there are several accounts that that before. Um, let me get this right. It's it's when they call the land of milk and honey, where it was raining golden uh, mana. You know, manna. Uh, yeah, manna, the yeah, manna. and yeah. and this is documented. Uh, that and it occurs at the end of a cycle you know I mean so I, I just like I, I have a very inquisitive mind I like to talk about you know these types of things but at the end of the day it is very simple it doesn't matter if ETs or this or demons or that or angels or this it really doesn't matter yeah because because and, and because it because if it's going to be something that we over attach to over identify with it's going to take us away. Doesn't matter if it was a trauma that happened to you when you were six years old or uh, some past life you remember that was really special. Over identifying with them is going to hold you back. But I like what you say, which is real simple. Uh, be nice. Think mm -hmm. nice things. Say nice things. Do fun things. You know what I mean? That's, that's it. This is all we got. That's all we really got. That's really why we came here because we have the ability to do that mm -hmm. and experience that. And to feel things. We can yeah. experience touch no, or a kiss or a hug or yeah. laughter, mm. not in a human sense, in the spirit realm. Yeah. It's, you know, everything's perfect over there. Uh, and, and that's boring. Yeah. I know. I remember those days. Yeah. We're, we're, so, just a, we're a star in the middle of nowhere. Not that it's not a great feeling. We all need a break sometimes. But yeah, after yeah. a while, you're just like, man, let's get back in there. 
we got another show in 22 minutes. We ran over. Okay. And sorry. Thank you for uh, staying with oh, me. That's okay. Ex thank you so long. much for having me. Yeah, we'll have to get together again later in the year, and uh, maybe yeah. we'll. Uh, what would you think about doing a one, one of those things you were talking about live, or is oh, that yeah. too? Oh, you know, I could do that. We just need to schedule it. Yeah, we could do that. So I, I like to to like show different modalities and stuff, and uh, you know, and but yeah, if you're comfortable with that, uh, yeah. what did you what did you call that thing? The, uh, it, it, uh, the un unique. It's a the unique guidance. I mean, it just has all of it on there. It just has all the questions. Oh, okay. Sit down. okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I remember you Delu said It's you a deluxe you... thing that I do. Okay. And yeah. uh, I'll also send you some questions to give you some ideas of some, mm -hmm. some general things I'll ask, and then you can add some. Okay. You know. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. We'll do that here in the next few weeks, definitely. But send me the stuff, and I'll put it on the board. We'll set a date, and and uh, okay, yeah, we'll do it right. It's very well, thank you so much. Nice I really meeting. appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it, and thank you. A for great me. conversation. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you for being so open, and uh, you know, and and you know, really sharing some intimate details and about your journey. It takes a lot of courage, and you definitely have that and many other attributes. Thank you so much. All My blessings pleasure. to you and yours, your husband, your kids, and everything you're doing. All right. You have a blessed day. You too. Bye-bye.